Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Anime Degens episode 25. Uh, we have two more pretty good topics for you today. It's uh, not quite the same as the uh, Black Air Force activity, but I am still excited. We have our <laughs> first look at Reborn as a Vending Machine. Now I Wander the Dungeon. And then we're going to do our Showdown Throwdown 3. Trace. So, guys, how we doing? Well, you know, we're just chilling, you know, drinking a few uh, uh, waters. And, uh, I, I, I've had several waters. <laughs> just waters, you know, just chilling. <laughs> I'm, definitely not, I'm definitely not drinking water, and I would like to give <laughs> the warmest happy birthday to our boy Tyler here. Oh. The big 3-0. I'm finally a boomer. I've been a boomer for years, but now I can officially... At my midlife crisis, um, mm. um, midlife crisis, a little, a little yeah. early for that one, my G. A little oh, early. You, you dying that's, at sixty, bro? Bro, yeah, that's you, what, you, that's, you at least gotta wait till like thirty-five, forty for that one, my boy. Isn't that what all the people that turn thirty do? Is have a midlife crisis because they're thirty? No, no, just, no that, just that's have, that's just the thirty scaries, bro. You just get oh. back pain and your knees start hurting a little bit. Yeah, well, I've had I mean, that, so I gotta do something else. I mean, I, I, f- fun <laughs> fact: I, I just got my first gray hair when I was twenty nine, and I fucking threw up and was sick for thirty minutes. I uh, wish I could have waited till I was twenty nine to get my first gray hair, dude. <laughs> well, I've I had a gray hair a couple of years ago. So. Oh, damn. Right. Yo, All oh, right. oh. I, I I just gotta ask: What's the over and under on Tyler buying like a convertible Camaro now that he's hit his midlife crisis? How long we <laughs> how long we thinking? <laughs> I got eight <laughs> years on it. I got eight years. He's oh. gonna be staring down forty and be like, "I, I need something." Yo, this shit's gonna have. It's gonna be like, like yellow, and then it's gonna have like Minato it. on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to make a bumblebee joke from Transformers, but he went straight to fucking Minato, dude. What do you expect? <laughs> then on the back, it's gonna have Naruto in the jacket. You know, uh, naturally, naturally. <laughs> Which boys want to go ahead and get into the news? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess to start, we just want to thank you guys for all the fucking crazy support we've had recently. The podcast has been popping off, so we appreciate that. And uh, everybody who's jumped in the Discord, the conversations have been popping, and we've got some pretty exciting events coming up in there. So you definitely should check it out. Yeah. If y'all, if y'all not all in there, you know, then y'all going to miss out on some of this shit. We... Dan's got a few things lined up for maybe next month or so. Yes. We got a we got a couple of things, watch parties and stuff lined up for uh, you know, this uh uh next couple of weeks, right? So Yes, sir. Yeah, you're definitely gonna miss miss out hanging out with us if you're not in the Discord. Uh we keep it live. Decently and, fun to hang out with that, I feel like. And <laughs> we'll be working on my Alex Trebek rest in peace impersonation. So if that gives you a hint on what's coming up, it's gonna be pretty fun. Let's go, Trebek. Oh yeah. Uh linktree.com slash anime DJs. Y'all already know what's up. What's Hit up? us up. Let's go. Tyler, you got a little news though. Actual news, not just us hyping up our Discord, right? <laughs> well, that was our biggest news of the night, but uh we'll we'll move on to the second one. Sounds uh good. Mappa and the directors of Cowboy Bebop and John Wick uh series are working together to create uh anime and it's called Lazarus. And I'm not sure if uh Bass has watched the uh, trailer, but I know Dan did. What do you think about it? It looks interesting. I'm uh, I I kind of want to see who the dubbed voice cast is because I think John Wick, I think Keanu Reeves, and if I could get Keanu <laughs> Reeves in an anime, I would I not. I would not touch subbed. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'm watching this dub. <laughs> hey, I completely uh, get that, man. Uh, I'm just I'm just glad that we have a really good team showing up for some some more anime. Yeah. I think yeah. this is going to be live. I think it's going to be live as fuck. Yeah, it's interesting because these, this, and there's another one. I can't remember the name of it. I know Tyler sent it to us. Um, Toonami exclusives are making a comeback. So that's kind of interesting. Um, Sir? Sir, what? Yeah, that's Lazarus awesome. is going to be a Toonami exclusive. So I don't even know if it's going to be on Crunchyroll. Thankfully, thankfully, with the Adult Swim, uh, I think it'll be on Hulu. So that helps oh, me. I don't God. know about Crunchyroll, thank but. God. Yeah, well, I, I have Hulu, so I'm I'm good for that. So the second one that uh, Dan's just talking about um, is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen's director is uh, making a another anime called Ninja Kam- Kamui. Kamui. And, uh, 
Yeah, Kamui. Um, Dude, you watch Naruto. You should not have pronounced that one. That's uh, that's no, like his back. That's like in the bottom Look. of his back. What is he on right now? Uh, I'm tired, boys. I, I just I, I seen the name. I was like, birthday wait boy is fucking this shit up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just imagining Obi Cho going Kamui, Kamui, Kamui instead of Kamui. He'd probably punch us if we actually said that's what it was, though. Uh, dude, but, he would send us into the infinite void, man. <laughs> this uh, this uh, this uh, new show from JJK uh, director mm-hmm. is actually pretty dark. It seemed like uh, I think me and Dan watched the trailer as well, and it just looked really dark. Kind of looks gruesome, like very violent, very action packed, and very dark. So I'm really excited for that. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember the trailer. It was gas. There's yeah, so, that anime they, coming out that like are just dark. That's like our new overall overarching theme in anime. Uh, at least like the headliners. Yeah, no more happy, no more happy pirate animes. <laughs> we're just getting, we're just getting blood, <laughs> gore, and violence. What's funny is the dude that I assume is the main character. He kind of looks like um uh Aaron Yeager's dad, right? Do you think so? Oh no, 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 not his dad, his but brother? Zeke. Yeah, Zeke, my bad. Yeah, he, he did give me Zeke vibes. He's, he's, he's blonde hair with a beard, you know? I yeah. Mean, did, the teeth, did the teeth stand out to you in this show, in this trailer? I, they kinda, I They kind of made me uneasy. I just can't get past uh, Fushiguro's teeth in JJK, so I haven't even looked at teeth. I just can't anymore. It's so it's so scary. <laughs> They've been focusing on his fucking teeth. He's just smiling up both motherfucking stuff. I don't know if you can see that or not, but look at that. Oh, at it's, got, it's, it's got the it's Dr. Got the individual Stone. teeth. He hates it's, that. I it's got that. the Dr. Stone shit going on. I'm not a fan of individual <laughs> teeth, dude. It's just like... <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. That's their thumbnail, bro. And I'm bro just like, why are you putting much? that as your thumbnail? Uh, <laughs> Dan said too much detail. Too much detail. <sighs> hey, man, I don't know. But we also got a first look at the actual One Piece live action trailer. And um, there was one scene that really <laughs> stuck out to me. <laughs> and it's the classic Luffy grabbing his cheek and pulling it a mile away from his face saying, I'm made of rubber. And they did it live action, and like I don't know if I can ever recover from that. It was just so bizarre. Yeah, I could have gone without seeing that. A hundred percent. You gotta do it though. It's such a timeless scene. It, 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 he, they definitely should have done it, but like, it was, it was, it scarred me a little bit. I had dreams about, well, nightmares about that. Another thing that uh, a lot of people was um uh, iffy about is uh, Arlong, apparently. So. The way he looks or whatever, so yeah, he had like that long ass nose, and it looked like they put like toothpicks at the side of that shit. It was funny <laughs> yeah. as fuck. But the trailer I, itself, though, it had me it. kind of believing. Yeah. I have maintained through this entire time we've been leading up to the you know the the, the official trailer that you know uh, I don't do live action anything that's been animated, but this is making me believe. Not gonna lie. Hey yeah. man. You throw money at anything, it's gonna look good, right? Yeah, I mean, and, I've been hurt before. And you put someone as anal as Oda as a producer, you're gonna have problems if it's yeah. bad. I'm I just really, that- I was gonna say, I just really hope that Oda did have a heavy hand in this, as much as we was led to believe. So, yeah, well, I'm I'm surprised they like let Arlong's nose slip past him. <laughs> they, they probably thought it was goaded, bro. It's like, look at this shit. This is this looks good. And I, I'm just I, like, I, I don't know, I man. <laughs> honestly, think it's as good of a shot at it you could do. I mean, Arlong is a goofy looking guy, anyway. So, like, what are you gonna do? You gonna you, you can't make that nose look realistic, you know? Yeah, it, it would have been better if it was just like uh, fish man skin with like sharp points on the end instead of like the toothpick shits. Well, he's a saw. He's a saw shark. So you I, need I that. know, but like, hey, man. For the all visuals, gonna, for the visuals. All I'm gonna say, I'm very excited to see him get tomahawked to fucking hell. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's actually gonna be great. Luffy's got to watch out for that blue hockey though, so we got to watch out for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, boys, you ready to get into it? Yeah, let's get into our first and last look at Reborn as a vending machine. I now wander the dungeon. <laughs> All right, guys. So this this anime uh, came out in the last few weeks here. I think there's four episodes out as of uh, July today. 26th today. July 26th. 
uh, made by Studio Gokumi. And I'm just going to say Axis because that's not a word. Um, it currently has a 6.52 on Mal, and <laughs> it's based on the light novel of the same thing. So just uh, to get in. 6.52? 6.52. Bro, this this did better than Magical Destroyers. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. <laughs> I'm <just> heartbroken. <laughs> um, so the protagonist was a vending machine otaku in his past life. Having died protecting a vending machine from a traffic accident. Wow. Um, when he awakens, he finds himself on a lake shore and confused about what happened. He only knows one thing, though. He's now a fucking vending machine. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just want to start this with... What kind of deranged fucking person is a vending machine otaku? Like, <laughs> who gets their rocks <laughs> off with vending machines, man? That's so bizarre. You know, like, I can even see, like, claw machines. Because those are those can be kind of dope, even though they rip you off. But vending machines is mad different. Boy, is well, different. Like, yeah, I go to a vending machine. I buy a Coke. I go to a claw machine. I put five bucks in for a dope-ass little Pikachu plushie or something, you know? Yeah, that you're not yeah. going to get... I'm gonna get it. I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a true sucker. I always go for the iPhone. I'm a claw machine <laughs> fiend, dude. Um, but guys, like the the anime itself, it, the opening scene, you know, the MC literally goes off a cliff trying to protect the fucking vending machine, which is one of the most bizarre first ten seconds I've seen out of an anime. Um, he's like that. <laughs> hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 bro's like that machine is in trouble <laughs> and just he's on his scooter behind this truck carrying this one vending machine and just dives for it as it's falling off a cliff like he's gonna do something um so if you guys can't tell from all the laughing we all really enjoyed this anime it was it was like top five for me <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah he he i'm only gonna so I did an outline and I'm only going to go through like the first 20 minutes of the, the entire anime. So we're not going to spoil anything for you uh, majorly, but what got me going. So once he gets turned into a fucking vending machine, he could only say like a few phrases. He can say hello there. Thank you very much. I look forward to your next use and you might win an extra item. And I was like, there's no way they're going to make a show. and He can only say five different lines. Well, after three episodes, we haven't seen anything else, so you're no. they're gonna make a show where he only says three lines. Well, uh, he he gets what well, if Five. if y'all don't if y'all don't remember, uh, that's what uh, old girl uh, Lamis or whatever she's mm -hmm. gonna take him to um uh I I don't even remember her name Hal Halifit or something like that to uh, that way sort. she can yeah. study him and maybe see if she can't make him say more words and stuff like that. But he he does have a few more words. I don't think y'all have uh, heard yet. He said he has something like uh, some type of no word, and then he starts uh, um, like cutting himself off mid sentence. Um, uh, oh, to like and vary like, it up. Okay. Yeah, and combining uh, the start of this sentence with start of this sentence to make mm. words. Uh, he he only done it a couple times, but I thought that was pretty um uh, ingenious. I guess. Uh, for a vending machine, I guess. I'm uh, gonna have to agree with that. Uh, that's pretty creative. I'm I'm not interested enough to find out what else he can learn to say. So that's all I got for you. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so one part that I actually did like. Um, overall, it is what it is. But he had like a point system for his vending, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> how he could uh. That's a beer cracking for anybody at home right now. Water. I, I, I tried to like put it between my PG. legs, but that was just really loud. Like I heard <laughs> that. I was like, oh, my man has a button. He can use the mute his mic. He was like, nah. Well, no. So the thing is, is like if I step like three feet away from my mic, it usually doesn't pick anything up. And oh, I literally okay. put that shit like down but under my desk. I had a barrier and it just, you know, the <laughs> vending machine <laughs> wanted to hear the crack. Makes him satisfied. <laughs> But uh, one of the yeah. vending machines can have beer in it, bro. I'm sure they do. Can. They yeah. do. That he happened does. the third episode. You, really? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they, they were little, drinking, drinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had that little party and you had a bunch of beer in it. And uh, it was that was like, the best part. I was like, I wish I could buy beer from a vending machine. Like, 
I remember Lemus asked Boxo if he had been drinking, and I was like, uh, I don't know. That's how that. I must have missed this shit because I don't remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they they got drunk. Boxo had the whole whole village Damn, turn. Okay. Yeah, turn on turn on ramen and vending machine beer, dude. What a what a life. A little bit oh, of yeah. Odin. Yeah, you got a party. Uh, but yeah, just to get into like the point system because I thought it was pretty clever. Uh, so uh, points are converted from money that, and he can spend them on like replenishment of his own goods or changing of the goods, and then like upgrades which we were not going to get too much into because that'll, that'll spoil some things. But uh, he also has like durability points. Like at the very beginning, he gets attacked by some like freaky frogs and uh, they're using up a bunch of us points, his hit points you know, just pretty much breaking him down. And if he hits zero game over, he can't be repaired. Um, he's pretty much dead. He dies. And then. Well, so bomb. he assumes, let's just say that. So yeah. he assumes you don't really know, but. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So he breaks down, not usable until I guess somebody might be able to repair him, and then he actually consumes one point per hour. So like he can't just sit there and do nothing. He has to figure out ways to be creative and sell people things. And fucker can also shape shift, which is mad different. But yeah, he has some crazy skills like putting up a fucking barrier against the frogs. Very very different. But I, I thought overall. Not for me, but the animation wasn't bad. The characters, other than Boxo, not a big fan of the, the vending machine itself. <laughs> but uh, the other characters were decent, I thought. They were... I thought the characters were all very generic. I mean, yeah. Like, it is a guy, bro. You know? know? There you go. The <laughs> highlight was... Um, I can't remember his name, but one of the characters had the same voice actor as Zoro. And he said, like, are you in danger or something? And it sounded like something else. So uh, go check that out. Well, <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> well, they, they, it, it happens a lot. And uh, um, especially with him, because mm -hmm. he like pronounces his words like that. But it happens a lot um, in the Japanese language. If if you if you really listen, you'll you'll hear other um Japanese voice actors, they'll actually say the same shit, but it doesn't sound as pronounced as he is, ah, is you know what I mean? Got so, you. Yeah, I think it's in Skype where he's, he asked Nami if he, she is something in English, but it's definitely something else in Japanese, but it sounded very similar and I was crying. I listened yeah. to the boys of Clip, I was like, are we really watching this right now? <laughs> but uh, no, I liked Lamus. I thought the whole... Um, gift from god blessing or whatever they called it for her being super jacked even though she's like a hundred five pounds soaking wet little girl fair like she could just carry a vending machine around like it was nothing so i'm glad they explained that because at first i was like what the fuck are we doing guys why is this little petite woman carrying around a 500 pound vending machine on her back like it's me with a backpack that has a laptop in it. I was like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah, Lamb is low-key swole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. uh, them blessings or whatever. Like, we don't know a whole lot about uh, how the world works right now. But uh, I think I think we're learning about it uh, throughout the time. So, um, but I think um, for me, this show was pretty interesting. Um, uh, I liked it. Um, I'm not saying it's great though. It's a definitely decent. It's a decent show. Like Bass said, the animation looked good. Um, it's pretty funny. I thought. Um, I laughed like multiple times. Uh, I really like Lamis as a character. She's the type of person that you know makes you the character that makes you want to like just root for her. You know, she's mm -hmm. like the you know kind of dumb. You know, like kind-hearted individual you know what i mean exactly um, yeah like she's easy to root for um like she's just a really good person yeah. you know um she treats boxo like an actual person even though he can't really talk you know she figures out a way to communicate with him using his his uh really common phrases for vending machines somewhere in the world um but yeah i i i thought it was good at what it was uh, trying to achieve but I'm not the audience for it, and uh, that's that was pretty clear to me from 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 the get go from the title. But and it's good at what it does. Going going off that, I think the audience for this is like for 
someone who, you know, just wants to like kind of relax and chill and just have a good laugh while watching something that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, you know, that likes that OP Isekai action because that's that's what this is going to turn into be. You know, the, his him as a vending machine, he's going to be OP. He's got like he can transform. He can do all that. And he's he can just do whatever, and uh, as long as he's got the coins to back him up, and uh, and I'm sorry, you just called the vending machine OP, and I can't take that seriously. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, in this situation, he actually is. You know, he's got a blessing, and you he's know, super useful. I, I will I will give Obox so that he is actually super fucking useful. Um, like he he's movable. You know, he's like unlimited rations as long as you have money. You know, so. I, I definitely get that. Definitely get that. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna compare this to is like a better version of campfire cooking in another world. Because in this we actually get to see the fights. And what and it's actually funny. Plus, on top of all that, um so they do some shit that's like really over the top during the fights. Mm-hmm. And it kind of reminds me of some of the shit that Mashal pulled off. And I really enjoyed that, like the uh, Coke with the, uh, you know, the the fit, the, the Mentos. Was, Mentos. Like, where else are you going to see that shit? A vending machine popping that out, <laughs> you know, other world creatures figuring this shit out and pointing a bottle and shaking it up with Mentos in it to kill a frog. Like, come on now. Like, this shit's funny. This shit's that, hilarious. So, so. I, I definitely, like, laughed. But I don't know if I was like laughing at it or with it. Well, it doesn't matter. You laughed, so I, that's I did the point, laugh. You know? No, it, it definitely got me at a few, a few. Uh, I at think a few I points. Sh- I think I shook my head. Like this is so fucking stupid. More than I laughed at it. I'm gonna oh, laugh, I laughed, say that out. I definitely laughed See, a couple that, times. That's what this is supposed to be. I think. I mean. Uh, I mean, where this it. That's the only way they could go with this, really. You know, like who who in the right mind thinks well. Let's make an isekai about a vending machine, bro. Like, how, where else are you gonna go with this except yeah. for make it make it stupid with ass pools, and th- that's all it is—a stupid with ass pools. And he's gonna have a harem, you know. There's no doubt about it. So, he's uh, a vending machine, he vending not... machine harem. I bro, hate everything. My I boy's hate... cracked. <laughs> I hate everything about that statement so fucking much. Like. They constantly, they constantly say, you know, if you was, if you was a human, you know, uh, I would, I would, you know, have feelings for you right now or something like that. Did like, they just, actually say that? Something like that. A variation uh, of it. I, I can't confirm so, that. I, I, you're, you're grasping at straws with that one, I think, buddy. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I can, I can confirm that. Episode four, that. episode four that oh. y'all haven't even seen. We, and we introduced see. a new character and she literally said something like that, but L- Lamis it says something like that before, too. So I, th- I think Lamish just looks at old Boxo here as like a really good friend, you know. LLB, ladies love Boxo. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we like, should, okay, we should make we should make a shirt. <laughs> so like, I, I was trying to put myself in in like the shoes of like the production studios, and like, I want to ask you guys this. How would you feel if your bo- your boss told you to animate this? Am I getting a paycheck? I mean, I mean, naturally. Is it the same paycheck I'd get if I was forced to animate really intense fight scenes and like gruel over that, or could I just animate? Probably, a- probably less. All right, then I I wouldn't care, dude. I'm getting paid. But like <laughs> this 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 was this was like, dude, they're just running out of fucking ideas at this point. Like I don't know what else to say. Like. Well, I mean, technically, this is kind of clever. Nobody else has ever done this before. There's eh, but a good th- reason nobody's done this maybe, before. Maybe, hear me maybe out. Maybe hear it. me out. Oh, it's well, literally, oh, yeah, I'll hear listen, you out. Listen, listen, it's literally 50-50. It's either this shit's going to be, you know, funny, and it's going to, you, you know, so just like us, we had to do a first look on it just because we've seen pictures of it. You know, right. it's like, what the hell is this? You know, everybody's seen it. And it was like, okay, what the hell is this? It's a vending machine isekai. We're going to have to see what's up with this, you know? And you get so many eyes on this, watching at least one episode to see if it's good. And if you pull them in off the humor 
you know, in the Lamas, you know, and the other girls and stuff like that, the, the classic isekai tropes, you know, which, you know, a lot of people will actually like because it is, it, it hits the classic isekai tropes hard, the OP character, the girls, the cute girls, and the funny nature. Um, so people that like that kind of stuff, it's going to stick around. So how many people did you bring in with just a vending machine as your main character? And it's just about keeping them, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't want to take away from anything you just said, Tyler, because those are some <laughs> very good points. Uh, but like OP vending machine, it just, it's, it's still. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying it's a great show. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it is good for what it is trying to be. So <laughs> I, I can, I, I a hundred percent agree with that. Actually. Um, it was, yeah. it was, it was so dumb. Like it was entertaining. <laughs> like it was so dumb. It was entertaining to me. Like it, If it didn't have Lamis there, this is another show, but because Lamis is there, true. It makes true. it so much more enjoyable. You know, can't agree. Uh, Lamis was in my bag like that, but, um, I don't know. Um, I just like, I went into this thinking I was gonna give it a one, and I gave it like better than that. You know, oh, so it's a hundred percent better than a one. Um, <laughs> Dan, I thought you were gonna like it. You know, your your big thing with isekais is like, you know, you don't want the uh, the main character to have black hair. He doesn't even have hair. Well, he had black hair to start. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, but no, okay, no, 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 no. Okay. I, 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 the thing I don't like about isekais is I don't like the harem. I don't like the. I mean, I don't care about harems, but I don't. Like, I don't like the tropiness of it. And a lot of the isekai tropes carried through in this, like women are falling in love with a vending machine. That is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Boxo got um, riz. What? But this this is supposed to be that kind of stupid, though. Is what I'm yeah, trying so to say. This is a so I think like a lot of other isekais. I'm, I'm just not like, the audience. I, 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 oh, uh, me either. But like I, I'm trying to like give it give it it's, it's like flowers at the same time because like they know what they are. They know what they're making. At least it's, they're not I trying gotta, to be something else, you know. Exactly. They're not trying to take it serious. If yeah. like if you want to watch something silly, like dumb as fuck, lighthearted, and you want to like laugh at some shit and like point at the screen, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Hey. I enjoyed watch. I enjoyed this shit better than I enjoyed season two of uh reincarnated, uh, I mean uh, Shield Hero or whatever. So Damn. You got me yeah. on that one. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. No, I, right. I enjoyed it way better than that, even though the first season was like a probably an eight for me. The second season just like it was just so bad, you know? Yeah, no, nah, this is definitely better than season two of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rising of the Shield Hero, which is crazy, boy. I, I, I think that the tough thing for me is there's just better anime to watch. Like if you want to have a good laugh, like oh, I mean, 100 percent. I agree go, with that. Go watch Gintama. That's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. An, like in an anime, it's the top tier. But like. I think the funniest scene from this, and I am going to have some spoilers here, and I apologize, but there is a outbreak of the adults in the community getting sick. <laughs> and old Boxo here turns into a condom vending machine and just starts spitting out condoms to give to all the people who were plowing each other. And that was that was fucking hilarious. I will say that was the funniest thing. I was that crying. Is one hell of a get rich quick scheme. Beautiful. Was he getting paid for those? I thought he just threw. Oh, he'll get paid in the future, though. Oh, I got yeah. you. I think I think they did pay. Uh, no, they, they paid for those condoms. They paid for it. Oh, okay. yeah, they paid so, for those condoms. Yeah. yeah. He was just giving them some samples to uh, look at and uh, see if they uh, that's what they liked. Uh, uh, if they thought that they would uh, cure the situation. <laughs> yeah, the lady's like <laughs> holding a condom in her hand, like, "What is this?" and just stretching it out, and I'm like. I'll put two and two together, lady. That's pretty obvious what that's <laughs> for. So while we're while we're talking spoilers, um, there was an episode, the, the episode that released today. Uh, by the way, like I said, spoilers, y'all. Um, he actually uh, uh, turned into a vending machine that sold porno mags. Uh, oh, to, he's uh, rich. He's rich. To um, calm down some rowdy men. Um, that was uh, you know, up to no good. And they was, and what was funny about it is they looked and they got it out and it was they all three just started making uh like um 
Thomas like, oh, I'm I'm all of a sudden sick. I need to go. I need to go use the bathroom. <laughs> See, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like it's it's like so dumb is funny. Okay, I might have to go watch these episode four. Yes, to see this scene. yes, that scene. Like, but it's, like just, it's just wild because they 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 do this funny shit, and it's just, uh-huh. you're not expecting it, you know, because you've never seen something like this before. So, I'm me personally, I'm gonna watch this all the way through. You know, uh, okay. I'm enjoying okay. it. So there um, you go. I'm I laughing think. at it. I'm enjoying it. I like Lamus. Uh, the main character is kind of bland, you know, but that's that's an issue guy. They want you to feel like you can, like, put yourself in that situation, you know, so um, they that's why they usually keep the main characters kind of, like, bland, you know, and uh, non- characteristics well them, you know what it, what it is is they want to give all these these uh nerd otakus these, ner- these otakus who watch isekais hope that they can get a harem one day if they're bland that ain't gonna <laughs> happen <laughs> <laughs> i think the other thing i want to bring up is that uh so zoro the voice of zoro character sorry the voice of zoro's character is like curial or something Mm-hmm. And his group had the lamest fucking name I've ever heard in my life. It was the Menagerie of Fools. And Boxo <laughs> was just making so much fun of him because of it. He's like, that is the lamest name I've ever huck- fucking heard. And all the people, because oh, it town, was, yeah. And all, all the people in the town are like, oh my God, they're so badass. They're so fucking cool. And like, that is the worst name I've ever heard in my life for a badass team of fucking hunters, dude. Come on. And they are pretty badass, though. I, I have a feeling like they're gonna um uh, be a bigger part of the story, especially since Zoro's for- voice actor is, you know, uh, the main the leader of that group. So I, I agree with that. 100%. Yeah, I mean, they're all over the intro, so it's gotta happen. But like, yeah. I don't know the fact that like your coolest fucking group of hunters in this whole anime is named the Menagerie of Fools. It's just like. <laughs> but they know what they're doing. That they know what they're doing. The whole show. The whole show's a meme. It's a gag. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing's a gag. And it's good. Like it's funny. You know, it's <sighs> it's it's easy to watch because you don't have to expect anything out of it, except for a, just a few laughs here and there. Like I, there's literally nothing else there. It's just laughs. You know, I had I had a, a really hard time getting through three episodes of it. So yeah, not me. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely not for everybody. But uh, you guys want to do some uh, ratings? Yeah, yeah, we can do some initial I'm ratings. I'm so excited for this. I don't want to go, go first because I'm gonna tear it up. Okay, I'll go first then. I'll go first. Um, five is mid. I'm not giving this a five. I'm gonna give this a four two. That's a solid score. Uh, it's. For me, that's that's my personal scale, uh, not objective at all. I don't have that much time to watch TV in the first place. I don't watch a lot of TV. I would not spend time watching this myself. Although I did laugh and uh, at it, but yeah, not for me. <laughs> Definitely not for me. Uh, do I need to go next, or you want to go I, next? I now? can go next. I mean, I'm going to tear it apart. So I mean, like Bass is kind of saying, like five is mid for us. And um, there is no way in hell that I'm continuing this unless Tyler comes. <laughs> Tyler comes in eight weeks from now. I was like, bro, it was it was gas. And <laughs> they I, still I'll, probably I'll, wouldn't do that shit, bro. I'll, no, I would try and binge it for you, buddy. <laughs> I would try and binge it for you. I just I can't imagine trying to watch this weekly because like all the the weekly anime we're watching right now go. is gas. There you go. But like, if I was really really down bad bored on like a Saturday or like a tuesday night or something and i had nothing else to watch which is god never gonna happen like i could see myself like watching this but i'm giving it a 4.1 a little worse than bass because i did not enjoy this at all (laughs) at all i will admit like if you're like about to go to sleep and you need something to throw on the tv this is a good thing to use honestly yeah it's gonna bore you to sleep it's not gonna bore you to sleep. Come so, on, Dad. I really mm-hmm. think the dubbed version could be potentially better than the sub for us, you know, English uh, yes. speaking folks. Yes. Um, I think it has more potential to be more funnier, you know, um, uh, funnier than um, 
you know, the Japanese because you, you don't have to like look at the subtitles and, you know, stuff like that. You can just listen, you know, and not have to pay 100% attention like you do with the subs, you know. So I think it would be even better, honestly, for dubs. I did watch like, um, like five minutes of the dubbed version, I think. Um, and yeah. it was okay. I, you know, I thought it was okay. Did you think uh, it was okay, Bass? So, yeah, I watched the whole first episode dubbed and I enjoyed the dub significantly more than the sub. Yeah. I just uh, didn't finish the dub dub because I knew there wasn't more than like, you know, just it that was episode, one episode so, at the time. Yeah. When so I, watched I just it. watched a few to see what was up with it. So, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I actually, like, if, if, I'm probably actually going to use this to fall asleep at, at some point. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the dub was way better. I, I think if it's going to be like this, this gag or like comedy isekai, like I'd rather at least, you know, like be able to like be doing something else and have this on like the background, like a family guy or something like that. Um, not something that I'm watching seriously, but like, Hey, all right. You know, there's like, what's Boxo the, up to now? Let's, a, let's exactly. take a look. Yeah. Like I, I I'm like, <laughs> You know, like I'm on the phone or like I'm doing something on my phone and I look over and fucking see Boxo vending condoms. Like, that's funny. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like watching it intently. This is not something I personally would watch week to week. But yeah, say the whole first season or first couple seasons are done. Definitely great background material. Yeah, and I might I, I might not keep up with it week to week, you know, it just. But if I got like like I watched the fourth episode today uh, because I had like. Uh, 30 minutes to spare and I didn't really want to watch uh, you know something else so I was like well this has a new episode out let's just put this on real quick you know just see what see what the hell's going on you know yeah. so uh, it's not reasonable. like I sought it out to watch it it's just that I had extra time I didn't feel like putting something else that I really cared about on you know yeah. so I put it on but with all that being said I think I'm going to give it like a um like a high five probably so high okay. five, maybe a low Good. six, depending on where it goes. So Good. Good. If you said seven on this, I was going to slap you through there the was, screen. There was dude. no way it was going to oh, be seven. I was you know going to slap him through the screen. So in my ratings, my ratings, like sevens, sevens are where my, you know, shows that I really like are, but mm -hmm. they're not like really good. You know, really good and up is like eight and up. And the shows that I like, you know, really like, you know, is around a seven or yeah. something like that. And then shows that I think are okay, kind of like this show, goes like six and maybe some fives. And then anything below that, I've probably dropped it, honestly. So, uh, got you. But, yeah. Yeah. If, if I say seven on something, I actually like, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eight, eights, nines, tens are reserved for like that good shit. Yeah. That, 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 that real good shit. Yeah, I think these are all fair ratings, honestly. Yeah. yeah that, four to, that four to six range is, yeah, that's what it is, I think. And honestly, it makes sense, too, because Tyler likes isekais, and I fucking hate isekais, so. I don't hate isekais. I just, I hate the isekai tropes. Let me put it that yeah. way. Okay. And like yeah. I said, this is this is just like a fun uh, isekai that's uh, unexpected and random and has ass pools and makes, kind of makes fun of the isekai tropes, kind of, in its own way, so. Can't um, agree. Awesome. Well, you guys want to get into the da 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 da, -da showdown throwdown three trace uh, triple. Uh, da, da, da. So we've done this twice before. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, if you're not listening to the podcast since the OG days, which is like five months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been about like a month though, or so a month and a half since we've done a showdown. Uh, two months, I think. Yeah, two, two months. months? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So th this is a topic I really enjoy. Uh, sorry, like a segment topic, whatever you want to call that. I really enjoy because mm -hmm. it's basically us just trying to bring gas to the boys and get them to watch a show they haven't watched yet. So we're each going to go through a show we haven't watched. And just like we did with the vending machine, we're going to watch a few episodes over the next week. And then next week, you'll hear our opinions on it. Um, so basically to get into it, uh, who's going to start bass. You want to get going? Yes. Yes. And like, you know, just like you said, like we're trying to introduce people to fire and I know y'all are going to try to sell me and everybody else on about 50 plus episodes of straight fucking gas. <laughs> Mine's I, I, mine is actually 50 episodes or four movies. So I got that going for me. Okay. I said 50 plus you're running at 50. 
I got you. I got you. I looked it up. I looked it up. It's 50 on the dot, okay? (laughs) Um, But I'm not going to try to do that. That's not what I'm here to do today. Uh, I'm going to introduce you guys to like some of the most entertaining mid that I've seen in the last few years. Uh, Sonya of the, the, the saga of Tanya the Evil. Sonya. I, <laughs> the saga of Tanya the Evil. Um, so this is a 2017 anime produced by like Nut Studio. Not <laughs> being <Nut. laughs> It actually has yeah. a mouse score of 7.96. Fucking okay. solid. Um, so there's only one season out right now. It's 13 episodes, but season two, it's a good time to get into it, boys. Season two is, air, uh, is slated to drop late 2023 or early 2024. The, the COVID years kind of fucked up getting this anime out, but there's definitely going to be a second season for it. Um, so just, I've talked about it. I think, uh, when you weren't here, Tyler, a few weeks ago, forget what segment we were doing, but I definitely have brought this up before. Oh, it was mid anime that we love. Yes, and I really, <laughs> really want to make you guys watch this, and I'm glad that I get to uh, shoehorn this into your schedule. Uh, <laughs> but this is a this is an isekai that kind of focuses on an atheist salary man who's reincarnated into a blue eyed, blonde haired little girl who is Tanya. Mm-hmm. I will go back and forth between saying, uh, he, you know, he, him to she, her, because it's. They're the same person. Uh, but right before the death of this salary man, he has a quick meeting with God where he's like mad disrespectful. And we're talking, it's one of the things I love about this entire show. Like we're talking about, you know, he told God, you know, if you were smart and you weren't so gimmicky, you would have just scheduled a meeting while I was alive. Like, you know, like this, this near death shit is kind of making you look kind of weak, man. <laughs> hey, um, honestly though like facts like if i'm a degenerate like fuck it pull me aside and tell me what's up like <laughs> see that's what i'm saying he's acting crazy you know he's saying like, this to god's face why he's dying give me give me a little dream sequence where you just basically tell me i need to fix my ways or i'm going to hell right Damn. yeah and like during this like little 30 second conversation like where he's pretty much just roasting god he's like you know like if you're really God, I don't really know if this is like, you know, my, my brain telling me, but it's like, if you're really do- God, like you do shit work, look at this place. <laughs> that, though. So in order, like God's like, you know what? I was just going to let you die. Cause you're a sack of shit. Um, you're so bad that I'm going to reincarnate you. And, but I'm going to put you in a terrible position and we're going to have some talks later in your next life. Um, so he's, reborn into Tanya and he has, you know, she has magic and like she proceeds to go into the military where she ends up being the fucking goat. Um, so, but like from the very moment this anime starts, you get the feeling that it's just going to be fun, really interesting. And like, it's a pretty quick watch. This is something you can easily get done in five or six days, 13 episodes, but it's super fun. Like you get to watch a 10 year old blonde girl, like lead, grizzled vets into fucking battle and they're like afraid of her which that by itself i think is pretty funny and then uh sorry gents you know you watch characters just like go demon mode on each other um and it's and like that's one thing i really enjoy about some anime is like you have naruto where there's like just some crazy boxing people getting overpowered it's a bunch of different animes like that like gojo i know a lot of people don't like him satoru gojo and JJK, but I, I like him. I like watching him dick on people. Honestly, <laughs> it's fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? Um, and she dicks on people. She's she can be calculated with it, or she can go to like straight rage mode. Like she is a balanced demon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not just all those like just dumb moments where she's just going super hard and like going crazy. Like there's actually some realistic moments in the show where like. It kind of shows you the mental toll of war and the toll of Tanya on the soldiers around her and like how she stays sane while she's being evil. And there's, a, there's actually a lot of military strategy because it's kind of like based in a different universe, but like that universe's version of World War One. So she she knows like the tactics that she, she be, should be using in the military. So there's like a little bit mix of like intelligence in there as well. But. 
through this whole thing, Tanya is like center stage, being a fucking menace, kills her own troops at some some points, talks her shit to God while they have those like conversations that I was talking about. And like she doesn't quite commit war crimes. Like she has technicality she uses not to commit war crimes because, you know, she doesn't want to go to jail. <laughs> but they war crimes. Um, hey man, all is fair in love and war, right? <laughs> that that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. Um, and really, like this, it's just so like gr- like it's I wouldn't say gritty, but it's like so twisted, twisted. It's like so savage that like you don't even get introduced to like any good people until like episode seven. Like the antagonists are the good people. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like it's ba- it's just like backwards. Like Tanya has like no redeeming qualities. Like she's a not a nice person. And I think it's just funny how they present that to you. Uh but they also make you feel for her in ways. So I feel like I can't wait for y'all gonna watch this, yeah. Yeah, it's it's already in my watch list. Don't even worry about it. Um based on our last mid animes I love segment. Um the thing with this though is I love the fact that she was given a second chance by the god of this universe and basically is just fucking flipping him off the entire time by just being a it's total great. total <laughs> degenerate bitch <laughs> and like that is that is timeless in my opinion <laughs> it's like i am who i am you can't change me fuck you <laughs> so i've i've always seen this like in uh when i was like scrolling through uh uh crunchy roll or whatever trying to figure out something to watch i've always mm-hmm. seen this I've always seen it rated high on Mal and stuff too. And like the cover, the cover of it always threw me off of it. And the fact that I never knew it was an Isekai until you just told me that. Never. So oh, yeah, if really? I would have known it was an Isekai, probably would have watched kinda, it. Kinda as good as you're saying, you know, I would probably already watched it. Even though you're saying it's, you know, you're mid anime or whatever, it's probably going to be more than mid for me, honestly. It's peak mid, so. it's peak mid for me. I yeah. love my so. favorite. My favorite statement is peak mid. I love peak mid, dude. Peak <laughs> mid is top tier shit. Like, there's oh. more freedom with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you could you have a chance to like step outside of the box because like you don't expect people to take you too seriously. You know. Oh, so when y'all say peak mid, that's like rent a girlfriend for me. So right. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> almost watched, I almost started that the other day. I, I thought I thought about hey, it. If you're looking for a funny uh, college student shit, mm. it, it's gonna make you laugh, bro. It's just a horny college kid <laughs> being horny. So. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, I've, yeah, I've seen a lot of people online that watch it, enjoy it. I was yeah, thinking about it, but it's it's so unfortunate though. Uh, what he has to deal with because it's like. He he he's horny for this one girl, and then he just gets a bunch of other girls thrown at him, and then he gets in trouble with this girl and that girl. While I don't know, it's it's a mess, bro. He, I feel for him. I feel bad. Talk about for him. suffering from success, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, it's not success when you're throwing hundreds of dollars. Oh, at it. oh yeah, it is rent a girlfriend. It yeah, is you, rent a girlfriend. You, you gotta rent. That one. You gotta uh, rent, buddy. But like, yeah. God damn! I just it, whenever Tyler talks about rent a girlfriend, all I can think about is the guy who um had a rent a girlfriend, you know, like program in Japan, and he would mm-hmm. just buy this one girl to play Yu Gi Oh with him, <laughs> and would always <laughs> request the same girl, and she eventually brought her own deck, and I'm like, that's that's fucking that's fucking paid for love right there, boys. Yeah, honestly, like you know, might as well show up to work prepared. Got your own cards now. <laughs> I mean, got a chance to win. The thing I'm really excited about with this show is I love anime that's not based in Japan. And from what I understand, this is like World War II. I don't know if Bass mentioned that or not, but it's like World, World, World War II. World War One. World War One. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So still, it is like a historical event. Like I love anime that's not based in Japan. Like Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorites. And that's based in some knockoff Germany. Who knows where, you know? Like Yes. I absolutely love that shit. So I'm really excited to watch this. Um, it's It's been on my watch list, like I said before, Bass even put it on this. So it's, I got a good excuse to watch it now. And, Let's go. Um, frankly, if I wasn't camping this weekend, I would probably watch all 13 episodes. It's so bingeable. It's so bingeable. You just want to see more and more and more of Tanya as you start watching it. I love it. <laughs> uh, Tyler, you want to get us into your show? 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be talking about um, uh, a 2014 show. It's uh, rated uh, 8.3 to 8.9 on Mal. All of the seasons are, you know, somewhere along that range. Um, it is called Q. So I thought about doing this for our last uh, showdown throwdown, but since we uh, watched Blue Lock like the week before, I was like, I don't want to put another sports anime on y'all, you know? So now I'm giving it to y'all. This is uh, this is like one of my uh, uh, top top What's 10, that? top 15 shows. So, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. This is how good they do this. Um, so basically the show follows the story of Shoyo Hinata, a smaller teen who wants to be the next little giant, which was like a legendary feared spiker even though he was like very small and short um uh he was vertically you know he could he he can jump very high but as well, far as being matters, right yeah like he was really short though so uh the problem is is that his current middle school that he goes to uh doesn't actually have enough people for a men's volleyball team so he constantly had to like practice with the girls volleyball and he never really got to do any games or any official practices. He was basically just hitting the ball by himself unless he could get his friends to, you know, help him out or whatever. You know how that is. So, uh, Tyler, man, <laughs> your dog is having a fit back there, dude. <laughs> Usually so quiet. Yeah. Can y'all hear that bad? No, it's fine. It's just funny. Uh, We're just laughing, watching the back. I'm like, fucking play with me, bro. Yeah, she's mad. She gets mad, bro. It's it's, it's my life. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, um, basically, he finally goes to high school. He finally gets to high school, and he gets to be a part of like a uh, prestiged uh, like volleyball school called Kurosano Kuro High. And it's actually the alma mater of the little giant, you know, but they've fallen on hard times. So him and another kid that's a very good setter uh, is the other main character, actually. Uh, they take it upon themselves to get better and carry this team, try to get this team back to its former glory, basically. And it just it's just all about Hinata's dream to being, you know, the legendary being as good as the legendary little giant and all that good stuff. But if you, if you don't know like a lot of stuff about volleyball, uh, if you don't know a lot of stuff about volleyball, it doesn't really matter. That's one of the things I like about this show. It'll kind of teach you the basics as you go. So, um, no, I, but, I, I fuck with volleyball. So no problem with that, dude. That was yeah. gym classic. <laughs> Back in the and day. Volleyball was always fun in gym. Oh, yeah. You just spiked the ball at people's face. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember what y'all thought about Blue Lock. I'm pretty sure y'all had a favorable opinion of it, right? Yeah, I enjoyed Blue Lock. I haven't finished it yet. I've watched like seven or eight episodes. It's just kind of... um, I enjoy... I, I, I don't know if I enjoy sports anime. And, and I just had a lot of other stuff on my watch list at the time. So... I am really excited to check out Q though. I mean, like, um, it's just been a super well-regarded anime for so long, and I know um, one of our listeners and our good buddies is really into it, so I'm excited to check it out. Who's that? Pook. Oh, yeah, okay. Pook. I Pook. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he knows what's up, because even though this is um, this is... Four seasons right now. Most seasons are 25 episodes long. Uh, the third season's 10. And uh, it's over, basically. It's got two more movies coming out, I assume, in 2024 sometime um, to finish it up. But this, if you like the intensity of sports and getting behind and rooting for people and just, you know always wanting to watch you know what's going on and stuff then this show is for you because it really does a good job with showing that intensity that sports mentality that uh you know um that uh competitiveness that goes along with this stuff and just okay. the lows 
and go into the highs and, you know, and not every game is a win, you know, and it shows you that, you know, that, that, that aspect of it, the heartbreak aspect, you know, and what, you know, I, I'm sure y'all went through it too when the game really meant a lot and y'all didn't get it, y'all didn't pull through, you know, it breaks your heart. So, Oh yeah. I, uh, I, yeah, I've, I've been blamed for some losses. I've been yeah. praised for some wins. Um, uh, so like, does it give you like that real like like team feel like, or is there like a little bit of animosity like at some points and like some it gives, great camaraderie? Like, what are we talking? I think about I think it does it really well because you know not everything is you know sunshines and sunshine and rainbows. You know, okay. yeah, yeah, and it shows you, especially with the two main characters. You know, Sh- Shoyo Hinata is the main main character, and then you got uh, Kagiyama is like the other main character and he's the setter and obviously Hinata is a spiker even though he's so short and you know and they they go at it a lot you know they're like rivals um they they get set up to be rivals um in the like the first episode or so That's and fun. then they end up on the same team so uh so it's that aspect to it too and then you just follow along with their relationship and the team's relationship. And then you also have to deal with, you know, some of the good, you know, uh, concrete, uh, you know, stable seniors, you know, they leave, you know, and you got to deal with your, you know, your solid, you know, um, you got to figure out who, you know, who's the next leader. You got to figure out who's going to keep you calm. You know, you know, it goes through all that stuff. And I, I feel like it, uh, done the sports world a a very good job. It showed the sports world a very very good in this anime. And it showed like all the things that go with it, and it always a- after every episode, it always left you wanting to hit play on the next one. So that's that's super cool. Um, yeah. because like I mean that's pretty realistic. I, I grew up playing football, basketball, and, and golf, right? And travel basketball and travel golf and like so during the year i would have like my team like these are my boys like you know there's 15 of us on the basketball team there's 10 of us on the golf team like you know i'm riding for these boys summer comes around we all go to our own teams on our own parts of town and if we have to play for each other like i'm gunning at my guys you know what i'm saying (laughs) so i think it's cool that like you know two rivals ended up on the same team because like my teammates in ways in real life became my rivals like, I know what this guy's capable before of. I'm a little bit better than him, or he's a little bit better than me. Like, I know I can go at him. Let's let's, let's have a battle. And that's really cool to see. So I'm, yeah. I'm actually really excited to watch this now. Yeah, the one thing I have to ask is, so, like, in Blue Lock, my big complaint was that the uh, the sports scenes felt slow. Um, I know it's, it's very difficult to uh, animate the intensity of an actual sports game. But how did Haikyuu do? Did did they like seem slower or like they had to slow it down to get the intensity of it? Or is it pretty action packed and fast paced? So is Blue Lock like your first uh, sports like style anime? That wasn't kinda? boxing. Yeah. Yeah. So. so Blue Lock done a really horrible job. Uh, Blue Lock tried to make itself a shonen. You know, it kind of tried to be like a Naruto and had like a lot of talking and uh instead of actually playing well and uh, haikyuu like i said the thing that's so good about it is just it's so intense yeah it does have you know the uh talking in the head and the team communication but it does it in a way that keeps you in the game and like you don't really get to see like play after play after play after play you know sometimes it skips forward and you know stuff like that but this show, like I said, uh, this was my probably my first or second. I can't remember if it was my first or second sports show. And I was always hesitant about watching sports shows. And I was like, wait, like this shit's actually good. And okay. like I said, it's in my top 10, top 15 now just because it's not all about the sports. It's about, you know, the relationship building with the team, you know, um, you know, the highs and lows the upsets and the the great victories it shows it does sports a really good job it shows okay like a awesome. high school mentality on like 
this shit means the world to me, you know, um, type of thing. You know, tomorrow ain't going to come unless, you know, we try our best out here, you know, and uh, stuff like that. And um, I really enjoyed it. And then when I watched Blue Lock for the first time, I thought Blue Lock was pretty decent. It was pretty good for what it was, mm -hmm. but it was like nowhere near high cue for me. Um, okay. I, I think Blue Lock's around like a probably a six or a seven for me. I would say, um, and Q is more like a nine, close to a nine. So, uh, just because okay. it does everything so much better. So. Yeah, no, that gives me hope. I just, I hate when you like, I mean, I've, I grew up playing sports. Like I was a soccer goalie. So I was always the hero or the villain, you know, depending on the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I just hate watching sports animes where it feels like you're watching them play underwater because it's so, so special slow paced in what should be an action packed scene you know like blue lock had it where like you felt like they were like jogging but they're running full sprint you're like come on guys just fucking play the game <laughs> yeah and yeah then, another I, couple I, things go ahead I, I was about to say uh dan i definitely feel you about being the hero or the villain um <laughs> a lot of the times until i got to high school you know um i played a lot of left tackle so oh, yeah, like you're, you you're know you guy yeah, like you, you have to be the best person on the line, and if you give up, you know, you could give up three or four sacks in a game, and like that could lose you the fucking game. So yeah. I definitely, I definitely feel for you, brother. <laughs> I definitely feel for you. <laughs> hey, man, last line of defense is never the fun role to play, but that's what the cards were dealt, right? Dude, it's how it goes, man. But it, it's it's fun. It, it's it's exhilarating. Oh yeah, because when you when you win them a game, you feel like a boss. When you have that, like, I mean, I had a game where like. I think I had like 26 saves or something like that. We won like one nothing and I was on top of the world. And then we had a yeah. game where they had one shot on net and the other team scored. And it's like, why didn't you say that? I'm like, you, you gave him a breakaway, dude. It was me versus one guy. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Like, you know? Yep. 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 I definitely it's had just... games where like, you know, like I definitely felt outmatched the entire time and you give up two sacks, but it's on third and eight at the end of the game. Yeah, I I am I am slightly worried to watch Haikyuu because I know based on what I've heard, I'm going to really enjoy it. And it's just going to put more on my good. fucking plate. And yeah. uh, I don't need anyone. That's what you're here for. 85 Dave, episodes. On. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, with 13 episodes, not a big deal. 85. That is <laughs> that is a commitment. And uh, your boy's got to finish Gintama. So like, I'm worried about 85 episodes. And what makes this even better, y'all, is that it doesn't uh, solely focus on Kagiyama and Hinata. It focuses on the team uh, a lot, too, like different uh, people in the team. So it shares the wealth. And last but not least, it's made by a good production studio, Production IG, which, you know, is in the same cahoots with Wit Studios. So they made like Kimi Nitsudoki, which y'all don't know about, Heavenly Delusions, some ev Evangelion yes. stuff, I think. AOT, mm -hmm. Vinland Saga. Like, that shit they've been, they've, shit they've been around since Evangelion. Yeah. That's, that's, okay. I looked it up and they've made, they made like two or three, I think, in oh, Evangelion. Like, I, 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 she's been around since yeah. like the mid 80s, dude. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's old. So I, I have faith in that. I mean, like the they've been around they know for what a long they're doing, time. They know, you know what they're doing. So. Uh, and like I said, Heavenly Delusions from last year, they was the ones that made that. So, uh, I mean, well, I guess it's one of those things too, though. We can't put a lot of stock in the studio because Bug Films have been balling yeah. out with Zom One Hundred. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But we we know Production IG and Wit Studio. You know they they they're you know they're solid. You know what I mean? We we know them. So, um, I hope y'all like it. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. I, I think y'all will too, since y'all have some sports background like I do. So, definitely, yeah. man. Well, do you guys want to get away from sports and get away to chess and um, giant robots? <laughs> chess, okay. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so the show that I'm trying to get these guys to watch is none other than Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rev Rebellion. Sorry, not Revolution. Um, this is like leaked its way into my top 10 and i have no idea why this is so fucking good it's so fucking good um so this is by studio sunrise and if you guys don't know i love studio sunrise that's gundam 
That's Cowboy Bebop. Like these guys come in a box. They know what they're doing. Comes, they know what they're doing when it comes to animation. Um, so this aired originally on October 6, 2006, when your boy turned 13 on the dot. <laughs> and it ran two seasons ending on September 28, 2008. Um, it's a total of 50 episodes. There is season one, 25, season two, 25. So it's not that bad. It's a pretty nice pace to it um it's got an 8.7 on mal so that's like that's pretty damn good you know yeah. yeah oh for sure uh so to start with a little summary in the year 2010 thank god this didn't happen uh the holy empire of britannia is establishing itself as a dominant military nation starting with the conquest of japan Basically, they took over Japan, renamed it to Area 11 after Swift defeat. And basically, it's a giant fucking internment camp for all the 11s, they call them, which are just the native Japanese folks. Japan has seen significant resistance against these tyrants in an attempt to regain independence. Lelouch Lamperoge, a Britannian student, unfortunately finds himself caught in the crosshair between the Britannian and the Area 11 rebel forces. He is able to escape, however, thanks to a timely appearance of a mysterious girl named Sisi, or Sishi, as they call her in Japanese, who bestows upon him a gias, the power of kings. Realizing the vast potential of his newfound power of absolute obedience, Lelouch embarks upon the perilous journey as the masked vigilante known as Zero, leading a merciless onslaught against Britannia in order to get revenge once and for all. Spicy. Oh, God. It, it, it's a fucking incredible plot, dude. That's just Holy like... Holy shit. Yeah. First five episodes right there put in a nutshell, but like it just grows from there. Um, So I said it's 50 episodes, but they do have condensed movie versions of this. Okay. Which is actually pretty awesome. I actually spent the last couple of days just watching through the first movie, which is about two hours. And I swear to God, dude, it covers like 13, 14 episodes. They cut some stuff out. They put a little bit in, you know, they change it up. But um, mm-hmm. the point gets put across pretty well. So if you've seen them, like, which one would you prefer, the movies or the, the episodes? So for Bass, I would prefer the movies because he's not looking for the high schooly bullshit. And for you, Tyler, I would prefer you watch the episodes because it's got the high schooly bullshit, which I know you love. <laughs> uh, Lelouch is part of the student council, so you know how that oh, goes. Okay, you're a big fan of that, and um, the movie is more focused on the rebellion itself, not so much the student council esque day to day. I guess like dealings of being on student council in a high school mm-hmm. just lost a lot of nature I, yeah, I, I, I feel like he had that ready though you know he already knew what we, we should be watching i like that i like I that did, dude i actually i didn't know that until i watched the first movie and they cut a bunch of shit out and i was like oh this is kind of this is kind of nice for me and for bass but tyler i feel like tyler really wants that slice of life he wants to see that <laughs> he wants to see the inner workings of a highly prestigious like um border school he wants to see how that operates you know that's just what he likes dan dan knows me so well i love it (laughs) so this is where i get a little worried with tyler being here oh shit there's meccas oh shit (laughs) but the meccas aren't the focus of the show which is something i'm gonna say 10 out of 10 times um, this is a great mix of mecha action thriller and psychological in like the genres. And um, if you like Death Note, you like that psychological battle, you like that chess game they're playing. Mm-hmm. This is a fucking top tier show for you. So you're saying this is more like a strategy kind of anime top deal. Yeah, right. the, like all the combat is literally a fucking chess board and it's Lelouch versus other people from the Britannian Empire and you see both ends of it. You see the strategy from both sides and you see how one side overcomes the other, which is I love that shit. You know, like so w- one thing I did say, I, I, I'm going to interject right here, Tyler, yeah. but one, one thing that I, I've noticed like online, a lot of people say Lelouch is like one of the smartest anime characters of all time. So obviously there has to be a lot of strategy and I'm I'm excited to see why people think that. 
Yeah, so I got like two or three, maybe two isekais that I really, really, really like um, that are like fairly new. And they don't have like a lot of uh, pure action scenes in it. But it's it's like this. It's like strategy. Um, it's, it's showing like the uh, top over the top looking, you know, um, you know, just explaining the situation and, and just basically saying what you're saying right now. And I really love that. And uh, I love the world building aspect and the, uh, you know, strategy building aspect um, of stuff like that. Uh, I just thought that was fun to fun to bring up that I actually already like stuff like that. So. Oh, definitely. Excellent. I mean, this is kind of like if you like Death Note and you like the anti-hero vibe. This is right up your alley. I mean, Lelouch, Lelouch, as it says, leads a rebellion against the Britannian Empire. And I don't want to throw too many spoilers in there about his backstory. But like, it's fucking awesome because he is a son of the king of the Britannian Empire who was exiled. So he knows everybody he's going against. He knows who they are. He knows how they think. And he uses that as to to his advantage when he portrays this, you know, character Zero. Nobody knows that it's actually him. And he portrays this character Zero who knows the in and outs of his opponents and just flexes on them. There's That's a scene, pretty cool. There's a scene in the first episode where basically he, he he's still, this is before the whole rebellion thing. And he'll cut school to go play like chess against nobles. And there's a scene where um, he's playing chess against some noble who owns like a casino or something. And he puts this king. His first move is with a king. And somebody is like, oh, that's a really bold move. Your first move is with the king. He's like, well, if the king doesn't lead the people, you know, what's the point of a king? And like, that's how he fucking thinks throughout the entire show. And it's fucking electric. All right. Here we um, go. Yes, dude. Oh, God. This is, I've been waiting to do this show for a while. I literally said, like, <laughs> after the first one, I was like, we're doing Code Geass next. I don't care what you guys think. This show is so fucking good. Um, so the Geasses are really cool. Uh, there's multiple throughout the show, but Lelouch has the power. You'll, f- it's in the first episode, so I'm not spoiling shit. It's called The Power of the Kings or Absolute Obedience. So basically, if he looks somebody in the eye, he can command them to do something and they will do it without question. Okay. Like in the first episode, he's about to get gunned down by a bunch of Britannian soldiers and he just flat out tells them to kill themselves and they all just pull a gun out, put it to their head and boom. So it's basically, uh, Makima, Makima. Ah, a little more broken. <laughs> he, does, she doesn't, he doesn't need to sacrifice four people to make it happen. Okay. So a little more broken. This shit's fucking right. broken. Power of obedience. Um, but yeah, the action scenes are really good. The mecha fights are awesome. But again, it's not the focus of the show. The focus is the psychological warfare, the strategy, that kind of stuff. Um, the moral gray area is really fucking strong in this show. Oh, I love that. Like, oh, I love that. <laughs> everybody loves that, dude. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. You have two opposing sides going at it. You know, should we free the Japanese? Should we, in, you know, ins- not enslave them, but just keep them under control, all that kind of stuff. So that's going at it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to say, if you like Death Note, Cowboy Bebop, the Gundam anime, Full Metal Alchemist, you're you're gonna like this show. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. If you don't like FMA Brotherhood, you're a fuck boy. Just saying. Facts. <laughs> and the most important thing I have to say: the opening for this show is one of the biggest bops in anime history. Oh shit! So don't skip the oh, opening. Shit. Don't skip the opening. It is a fucking banger. Big bit. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just so fucking good. I mean, like. I rewatched the first, like the first movie essentially over the last couple of days. And I'm just like, oh, this is fucking, it's still gas. I'm probably going to rewatch the whole show, knowing me. I'm going to watch all the movies. <laughs> but um, the one thing I will say is the way they animate characters is pretty interesting. They're very uh, tall and slender. Okay. So, like, um, very tall, very skinny legs, very skinny body. It's an interesting anim- animation all legs. style. All legs. 
So like people have had an issue with that, but like get over your fucking self. Just who watch cares? the show. The yeah, story's like, so cares? good. Ain't that why? That, ain't that why people have issue with One Piece in the beginning too? You know, that's the same kind of shit, right? Yeah, everybody's skinny and lanky as fuck. Yeah, yeah, kinda. I mean, One Piece the thing is goofy, but this is more like that's just how he draw. That's how the mangaka drew it. So right, but gotta, like gotta yeah. be respectful to the the, the source material for sure. Uh, Definitely, but yeah, Maul's got this at an eight point seven, and I'm I'm putting it at like an eight point seven, eight point eight. Like this is top ten anime for me. It is it is so good. The ending is a massive cliffhanger. I'm not going to spoil anything, and it's very unexpected, but um, it definitely fucking makes you think. And I love shows that make you think. Like I know we just talked about Reborn of as a vending machine which is just like <laughs> a comic crap shoot this is <laughs> this this is like top tier like if you're into like intellectual shows like this is mm-hmm. right up there okay are you saying vending machine reborn as a vending machine isn't intellectual i, I think have- he's very intellectual my brain, I, dude. If you're thinking that a child putting Mentos and coking, watching it explode, is intellectual, we gotta have a we gotta have a talk off podcast, brother. <laughs> very fair, very blue fair. Eyes, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I I definitely recommend the show. Ten out of ten. Like if anyone's listening, you haven't watched yet. Highly recommend. And the mechas are pretty badass. The one thing they have over like a lot of mecha shows. Is there's an eject button so like your console can pop out of the robot? Fucking you finally, can, you can get away from the fight. You don't just get blown up. You just kind of boo, and you just end up somewhere else. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you guys have any questions on it, or you just fucking pump to watch it? No, nah, I'm I'm excited. So, should uh, showdown throwdown is always one of my favorite segments because I get to see like what you guys think. You know, what you guys think are your favorites um get introduced to like new new shows yeah i'm just excited to watch both of these shows honestly definitely yeah. that i I've, I've 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 wanted to watch haiku for a while and uh tanya might be a sleeper so i'm excited to watch that yeah super super sleeper honestly like like me and tyler brought like two top like two eight point five <laughs> shows to the <laughs> fucking board and you're like yeah this one's gas don't worry about the rating <laughs> i had to bro i had to it's so Ooh. fucking good it's so I, it's slept on it's it's 100 percent slept oh, on we've underrated just, we've been talking about mid animes and black air force energy for like the last two weeks so bass is like y'all need to learn today <laughs> yes somebody gonna learn yeah i love it i love it i mean that's that's one of the uh this is one of the reasons why we started this podcast is to you know venture out into the unknowns era unknowns you know and watch you know different shows and this is why we love this one this segment and this is one of our favorite segments because we actually get to do that so yes yeah you, you get to pick a show where like i i get to make people watch this shit yeah yeah you guys can be well i'm not sure on tyler yet but bass can be strapped in for 50 episodes i can almost guarantee like this is right <laughs> up his fucking alley <laughs> And I think if Tyler can get past his fears of Fortnite, he'll really enjoy this one too. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you guys are a new listener, I had a thing that I, I mean, so like I love mecha anime. I've been the mecha guy for a long time. I'm the, I'm like the mecha specialist for this podcast. And Tyler has a crippling fear of robots because they <laughs> kicked his ass in Fortnite one too many times. Not fear, <laughs> just like disgust. You know? <laughs> disdain, disdain of giant robots. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's getting better. I, I, Dan and them has made me watch a few mechas here and there. So, and they've not been that bad. You know, I've not hated them. So. Oh. Just wait till uh, I get him to watch the Zoids, dude. Oh, shit. Bass, did you watch Zoids as a kid? <laughs> Hell yeah. Bro, yeah, I, I had one of the most phenomenal... One of my favorite dreams ever was, like, being in a fucking Zoid when I was, like, four years old. Wow. Is wow. it bad that I don't even know what a Zoid is? You will know. Yes. <laughs> it, it, uh, you didn't have the right cable growing up, is what I'm going to yeah. say, because Zoids was, like... 
that shit hit, bro. I think I it was three probably, channels, bro. Don't don't come at me. Yeah, it was probably like <laughs> Toonami after the end of Kenshin and Yu Hakusho always came on, and basically it's animal mechas, and it's just fucking awesome. And one of my favorite memories as a kid is somehow my grandma found out probably through my mom that like Zoids and she got me the scorpion. You remember the scorpion Zoid bass? Yeah. She got me a model of that. I got to build that shit. Fucking sweet. And I think my, my favorite one was like, this is the one I had the dream about being in. It was, it was either a panther or like a cheetah Zoid. It was the Liger Zero, brother. Don't yeah, even it was the joke. Liger Zero, it bro. Was the Liger Zero, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, I still remember that dream. You know how you wake up and like you forget dreams within like five to ten minutes? This is yeah. fucking 25 years later, and I'm like <laughs> still vivid in my mind. I, I, I mean, love Zoids. <laughs> my favorite, obviously Liger Zero is number one, but my second favorite was definitely the Command Wolf. Excellent. <laughs> the blue wolf with the giant ass cannon on his back. Yes, it was yes. gas, baby. All right, I can't wait to watch. Uh, make a Tyler watch Zoids. So, <laughs> Dude, yeah, no, it's just crappy early two thousand shonen. That's all it is. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler, I'm but ready. it's great. It's great, dude. The the main character, I think, is some Vance McCloud. Is that what it is? Do you remember no, that? No. I, I don't remember. Hell no. Nah. I it's, just remember Liger Zero, bro. It's something McCloud, and he is your stereotypical early two thousand shonen character, but he pilots a badass fucking cat robot. Okay, I fucking love it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'll at least watch three episodes of it, so. <laughs> I think we just gotta okay, skip to, okay. like, three badass episodes. Like, no, you don't watch the beginning. Don't worry about that. Just hear some fucking fire. We're, we're just yeah, gonna put you on game. If that's the route y'all wanna take, you know, then hit me with it. You know what I mean? Wait, we will. Hey, so. We will. Done. <laughs> well, guys, we really hope you enjoyed hanging out for this week's Anime DGEN's Bullshit Hour. Speaking of bulls, the raging bull from Zoids is badass. The lady who pilots <laughs> it is a fucking stunner. <laughs> Make sure to join the Discord like we talked about. We have a lot of bangers coming out. We got a bunch of fun events planned. Linktree.com slash anime degens. If you don't know how to spell that, look at the title of our podcast. It'll help you get there. Check the link in the bio. That'll also help you get there. And we'll catch you next week for the weekly rundown i believe we're dropping that on wednesday due to some vacations coming up so yes. schedule's just gonna be a little wonky the next few weeks guys just bear with us i got a lot going on so thanks guys we'll see you next week for the weekly rundown bye bye Peace.